How's it going everyone? Titanhawk here did again today and I'm going to just show you how to use the Discord Gateway API. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. To start with, we're going to be in VS Code. We're going to open up a new terminal and we're going to want to create our package JSON file. To do this, uh, we can do a really easy command of npm install and this is going to be WS for WebSocket, as this is going to be how we communicate with the Gateway API. So now we can then create our config.json file. This is where we're going to be storing all of our environment variables. You can go ahead and create a curly braces there, set there, and then we're going to say gateway token. And I'm going to show you how to get this in just a second. We're going to use this. This is going to be, again, how we communicate with the API. One other thing, though, before we go ahead and get that is we need to go into package JSON, and we're going to make sure we add in the line type module script or project. That way this is able to work with everything else later on when we try to run it. In order to get your Discord Gateway API token, what you need to do is go ahead, open up Discord in a web browser. That's right, a web browser, not the desktop app. Then you're gonna go ahead and do the shortcut Control Shift I to open up the inspect terminal here. And what you're going to want to do then is go over to network here because we're going to be looking for the typing event. So if you can see here, I'm just going to start typing like tests and you'll see this typing event show up here. Then what we need to do is we need to scroll down until we find authorization here. This is what you will want to copy and paste into your project and into the gateway token that way you are able to communicate with the discord gateway api now we're back here in visual studio code so what i'm going to do now is start typing out some of the important parts of our code you can see here at the top the first thing i've gone ahead and done is import websocket from ws this is to make sure then that we are able to communicate with the discord gateway api and the next thing i'm going to do is make sure i import our environment variables from our config.json file and we are going to want to add in the assert and then type json this way we are able to get all of our environment variables mainly for this tutorial it's just going to be that gateway token but if you would turn this into a discord bot you will then be able to also pull in your bot token or whatever other environment variables you may need now at the top of the file here there are going to be several variables and functions that we're going to need throughout this code file to make sure we are able to get everything working first there are some variables that we're going to want to have throughout our code that way we can access them whenever we need to First is going to be const initial URL equals WSS colon slash slash gateway dot discord dot GG. I'll put a link to the documentation for the gateway API in the description. That way, if you want to follow along there or if you're confused about anything, you can go ahead and follow that link. It will it is very in depth and very detailed on how to connect to the discord API. Next, we'll want to have a, another variable called URL. This one will be modifiable, though. We'll do let URL equals initial URL. And then underneath it, we're going to want to make sure we also add our session ID equal to the empty string for now. Again, these variables, we're going to be using them throughout the code. So we're just defining them up here. You'll see what they all mean. Up next, we're going to do let WS. This is going to be our WebSocket. We're not going to declare that yet. We're going to wait. Then we're going to do a let interval equal zero and a SEQ or a sequence of negative one. Again, bear with me in just a few moments. I'll explain what all this means. Next, we're gonna to want to have our initial payload. So if you are unfamiliar with how WebSockets work, essentially this is a client server model and the payload is what we as the client are going to be sending to the Discord server in order to communicate and get all of our data. So our payload is going to be let payload equal curly brace op two D and another curly brace. I'll, I'll explain what this means in just a few moments. Token, and this will be env dot gateway token. You can see there, VS Code detects that. That's what we're talking about. Our intents is three three two eight zero. Intents is essentially the permissions that we want to be able to have when we are communicating with the Discord API. 
is do we want to be able to read? Do we want to be able to write? That kind of stuff there. Then the properties, we're gonna wanna make sure we add a field for that. And it's gonna be another JSON object. Now do dollar sign OS. And for me, this would be whatever operating system you're running on. So for me, this is Linux. Your browser, you can go ahead and input Chrome. And you can also do device and Chrome will be the answer for, or the value for that as well. So this is our initial payload. Now we're going, now we are ready to start writing some of our functions real quick. I'll quickly explain why the op equals two here. So op is essentially what the gateway op code is according to the documentation, which is fancy terminology for this is the payload type. What are we sending to the discord gateway API? D essentially is our data or our event data. What are we going to give the API? This could be strings, integers, numbers, whatever you want. Then you'll see later on, we're going to have also an S and a T field. The S field is going to be the sequence number. So kind of alluding to that up here. And then T is going to be the event name, which we're going to use later on. First thing we're going to do is write another function. This one will come in handy later, but for now, we're just going to go ahead and write it out. Const heartbeat equals MS for milliseconds return set interval. We're going to then it's going to be another arrow function here. And for here, this is going to be WS dot send JSON dot stringify here. We're going to do op one. And our data here is going to be null as we essentially this heartbeat function later on, what this is going to do is this going to allow us to communicate and ping back and forth between our client, which is our machine and the discord server. One other thing we need to do to make sure we, for the interval that we set, we need to pass in down here, our millisecond parameter. So now we can go ahead and continue and we can go ahead and write our next function, which is going to be to initialize the web socket. So we can go ahead and write a function initialize web socket. And this is going to be another function. If web socket essentially is web so web socket, a valid object and the web socket dot ready state is not equal to three. We are going to want to close our web socket. So essentially what this is, is that if our, we have a valid WebSocket object, but it is not ready, we want to go ahead and close it as we're going to create a new one and say, let was ready equal false. Say WS equals new WebSocket. And here is where we're going to pass on our URL that we create up here at the top. URL. We're also going to add some more to it. We need to add a specific version and an encoding to this. That way we tell this, the discord gateway API what we want. So we'll do slash question mark. And these are query parameters for the path V equals 10. This is essentially saying what version we are wanting and or the ampersand encoding equals JSON. Now there we go. We create our web socket. So what we can now go ahead and do is start preparing for events that this web socket will be going through. Up first, we're going to write the event handling for when the socket is open. So we can do WS dot on, and we can go ahead and say string open. And we're going to say function open. And here we can go ahead and pass in a function for what we want this to do. So we can first check to say if the URL is not equal to the initial URL, then we're going to want to make sure we set some things in place. This is an indication then that we are already connected, but we want to make sure we continue to resume that connection and resume communicating with the API. So we can go ahead and create a new payload const resume payload equal curly braces. The op code for this is going to be six. The data that we want to pass in is going to be our environment token or our uh, gateway token, excuse me. The session ID. 
and the sequence. That way we tell it where we were at right when our connection was throttled or anything bad happened where we resumed the connection. That way then we are able to continue getting our data and continuing all that. So we can go ahead, make sure we close this out. Now, the last thing we just need to do before we are done here is go ahead and simply send the JSON stringified version of the resume payload to the Discord API. Next, we can go ahead and write our error and our close case. So really easy for error. If the WebSocket ever encounters an error, we can go ahead and just say function error. This is going to take an argument E. And we're going to want to go ahead for our function body. We can go ahead and just simply do console.log E. That way we know exactly what happened and we'll be able to read through the error in case there's any details hidden inside there. Next, we are ready to go ahead and write our close event function close for our second argument. And in here, this is where we're going to use our was ready variable that we declared earlier. So if it what if the WebSocket was ready, we can go ahead and just say the console.log gateway connection close trying to reconnect. Now this here is going to tell us that if we were if we ran into an issue here, we will want to then try to reconnect. So but first before we need to do that, we need to set a timeout. Luckily, this code when it is done, it will automatically reconnect for us. So here we just need to make sure we do a set timeout. And this will be another error arrow function, excuse me. And this will then just be another call to initialize the WebSocket. But before we do that, we want to make sure we give a timeout of 2,500 milliseconds. That way we go ahead and make sure we do not flood the Discord API with a bunch of requests and hitting the rate limit. If you don't know what rate limit is, it is essentially what APIs have as a safeguard to prevent people from getting a bunch of data in such a short amount of time that will then cause security concerns and massive amounts of data being release at a single time. Now here is going to be the fun part where we're going to add in our websocket.on message event handler. So this is essentially is saying that, hey, when we have incoming data, we want to be able to be ready for it and be able to prepare to receive it. So knowing that we're going to have data coming in from our websocket, we're gonna want to go ahead and create a variable called P, which is short for payload, json.parse, our data and then what we are able to do with our payload that we receive from the WebSocket is we're able to break this down into the same components before that I mentioned with our initial payload at the top of the file. We can break this down into the type, the opcode, the data and the sequence. We go ahead assign that to P and therefore we are now ready to go ahead and break down the data. So. Before we do that, there is one thing we need to make sure we are prepared for with a specific opcode, and that is going to be opcode 10. So I'm going to write a switch statement for this. If you want to be able to handle more of the different opcodes, again, doc, the link to the Discord gateway documentation will be down in the description for you to read about. But as I said, the opcode 10 is the indication that we need to be ready to reset the heartbeat interval. So to do that, we're going to say const heartbeat underscore interval is going to be equal to D. And that is just simply our data. Then here we can go ahead and say that we want to call, uh, we want to say interval. Again, this is the interval variable that we declared earlier. Our interval is equal to heartbeat, which is our heartbeat function. And then this will be our heartbeat interval that we are passing in as our time. So there, we can go ahead and pass in a heartbeat interval, and then we can set was ready to true, as we know our socket is ready for data. We only now want to make sure we do this here if it's only a new connection, because we want to make sure we are still prepared for a very specific, uh, all error cases that could be happening. So we only want to send this, something back to the, the server if something if the initial URL is the same as our URL, which is essentially simulates that we only want to send an identification payload 
on a new connection, not on a resume or a disconnect, or excuse me, not on a resume because it causes a disconnect. So if our URL right now is the same as our initial URL, then we want to send json.stringify a payload, again, our initial payload, because again, we want to identify, we want, this is essentially is identifying the server with who we are. We only want to do this on an initial, on a new connection, not on resuming. So we can go ahead. This looks pretty good for our, our case statement here for uh, the op code number 10. We can go ahead and break. Now there's one other one that we want to be prepared for, and that is going to be case zero, which essentially means we just need to make sure we set the sequence number to the sequence number that we receive from the WebSocket. So this looks good here. We can break. And now we are ready to handle T, all the different types of events that we can receive from the Discord Gateway API. So what we're going to do to start is we're going to write another switch statement. And this here is going to be our, our, for the variable T. Again, this indicates the type of the event, and this will come back as a string. So again, the Discord Gateway API has a whole list of events of what you can set to handle. But for this video, I'm only going to do three events. And the first one, is going to be case ready. And this essentially is exactly as it looks. We're going to just say to our console, gateway connection ready. Then we're going to want to make sure we set our URL to be our data dot resume gateway URL. That way, if the this uh, connection were to become closed, that way then we are ready to resume our connection as fast as we can. Then we're going to make sure then our session ID is our data dot session underscore ID. Again, all of this is on the documentation. We go ahead and break here. And this looks pretty good for our ready uh, case. If it is a ready event, there's another important one here. And that is going to be the resumed case where the connection to the gateway into the server is resumed. And this is going to be really easy. There's not a whole lot we need to do here. We're just going to go ahead and make it clear gateway connection resumed break. And then the last one that we're going to do is going to be case message create. So whenever discord detects that someone has just created a new message in uh, one of the servers or one of the discord guilds that you're in it, this gateway will detect that and you can actually get information from the, uh, from the message and from the server. Some of the messages that, or some of the stuff that you can get here is there are three that I'm going to show you how to get. Again, there's more on the documentation. You can go ahead and get the author equal D dot author dot username. And then you can also get what discord calls the discriminator. So the discriminator is those four numbers that you see after your discord username. So for me, mine would be Titanhawk 17 pound symbol or hashtag one, two, three, four. The one, two, three, four is what is the discriminator as that is how they make sure that even if you have the same username as someone, you are still able to be identified separately from them. So we can just go ahead and pass in the discriminator if I can spell it correctly. Then the other thing you can do, and this is probably the most important part, is we can go ahead and say like content, like what was the content of the message equal D dot content. And then from here, you can even get the message channel ID, which essentially says, hey, where did this message come from? was simply just checking, hey, where did the, where, what is the channel ID? That way then if you are only looking to get certain or get data from certain channels in certain Discord servers, you are able to do this. I actually created a project that looked for Rocket League scrimmages by using the channel ID. So again, just an idea for this sake of the, for the sake of this video, I'm going to head and not do that. But now all I'm going to do here is do a console dot log. And what we can go ahead here is say, we're going to just print out to the console all the messages that we are receiving. So we can just say, the author, pound symbol, uh, the discriminator, and then we can go ahead and do colon, and then we can just go ahead and say content. 
This way here, we are able to tell exactly what they were saying. We can go ahead and just put it out to our console. That way, when this is up and running, we are able to see exactly what is being said and who is saying it. So all this looks pretty good. Now, the last thing we just need to do is go ahead and just type in initialize WebSocket down here at the bottom. That way we call our function and then we are ready to go. So the important thing here to note is there is a, actually a very specific way we need to make sure we run this file. And that is going to be making sure we run this with the experimental JSON modules command. Otherwise, that there's a chance that this might not work. So I'll go ahead and type that out. Again, node experimental JSON modules and then our index.js file, and we can go ahead and give this a run. Now there is a chance that you do get a syntax error, as you can see here with the import env from dot slash config dot json, the assert. If you do get the error, you can just go ahead and delete that there from the top, and we can go ahead and go ahead and run our code here again, and you'll see right away that the gateway connection is ready. So what we can go ahead and do is I'll make this a little bit bigger. We can go ahead and wait here for a few moments while some messages come on in from these different discords. And I will see you all in a little bit once I see some messages. All right, everyone, you can see now that we are actually getting some information here from the Discord API. And we're actually able to see some messages here. Some people in the Rocket League six man server are going ahead and reporting some matches and it is able to successfully get that data and that information. And now this concludes the tutorial for how to access the Discord Gateway API. So be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed and comment down below if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this, or if you'd like to see me make another video on this explaining more about the different events that can happen with the Discord Gateway API, be sure to let me know. Also, please be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed the content, and that way you don't miss out on any new videos. Until then, my name is Titanhawk17, wishing you all a great rest of your day, wherever you may be.